Hey everybody, this is Scott Mann. I'm the director and founder of the Stability Institute. And uh, this is where we broker knowledge and connect stability professionals on complex stability problems in undergoverned at-risk areas around the world. And I'm really glad you're here with us today on Stability TV and joining us for our first ever uh, book review that we're going to start doing on the Stability Institute. I feel a little bit like Winston Churchill sitting in front of the bookshelves and, uh, and talking at you like it's a fireside chat, but um, I think you're going to enjoy this book review. I think it's something that's going to be useful to you. Um, and, and I'll tell you, at the Institute, there's really four things uh, that we're dialed into right now and that we're focused on. And, 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 and the first thing is an appreciation of local realities. So whether it's Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, Colombia, we're working to help you gain an appreciation for those local undergoverned areas, both bottom up and top down. And speaking of bottom up, the second thing is to help share with you and, and uh, enhance your understanding of the bottom up methodology, the ways in which we can connect top to bottom uh, in these undergoverned areas. The third thing that we focus on at the Institute is on building and leveraging collaborative stability networks. Uh, yeah, it takes a village, but it also takes a network. In this, in this day and age of complex, wicked problem sets around stability, it is all about the network. It's all about crashing on these problems together, coming together with practitioners and professionals and subject matter experts, and collaborating on these problems. And the fourth thing that we focus on at the Institute is the tradecraft. Uh, whether you're a special forces guy, a U.S. aid representative, an NGO, or private sector, uh, a holistic, full-spectrum understanding of stability is essential today because you may find yourself as the only person working in these outlying communities, and you have to be a good steward and advocate for all those aspects of stability. So those four things are what we really focus on. And I will tell you today, the book that we're doing, uh, Rule of the Clan, by my friend Mark Weiner uh, really addresses all four of those areas. It, it helps, it will help you uh, in so many ways understand and have an appreciation for the local areas uh, that you're working. Um, it will give you some tools uh, to really enhance uh, the bottom up approach uh, and certainly connecting you with Mark Weiner's work as a professional and expert on clanism and honor based society. I think will serve you well. So I think this book, I know the book Rule of the Clan, uh, is certainly a book that you'll want to check out and it addresses all four branding areas of the Stability Institute. I guess my question to you is, I mean, have you ever worked in those areas, those undergoverned areas where clans, ethnic groups, tribes, even gangs uh, dominated the local landscape, you know, beyond the reach of the formal government. You had these honor-based societies where clans and tribes really were the order of the day. Uh, and every aspect of stability uh, is, is, is orchestrated by these traditional forms of civil society. Well, I know I certainly have, and, and I know that I had my struggles in really understanding uh, the fundamental aspects of clan society. And frankly, I think we all do to some degree. And a big reason for that is because we largely come from a society of contract where the individual is held in higher regard than the group, which is radically different from many of the undergoverned areas where we work today. So I think that's why Mark's book, Rule of the Clan, is such a useful tool for what we do uh, because it offers all of us a framework to understand, to better understand these clan societies, these honor-based societies uh, that are beyond the reach of the formal government and where we so often find ourselves. Uh, let, let me give you a few examples of this and, and what you can find in Mark's book. First of all, um, I will tell you, I think we've been getting this wrong in places like Afghanistan and, and Yemen and other areas for a long time. I don't think that we fundamentally understand clanism, rule of the clan, on a level that we probably could as stability professionals. And, and so uh, this book takes us there. Second, it's an easy read. This, is, this, is, this book, is, it's easy to get through. Uh, Mark has a lot of levity and humor, great stories and analogies to illustrate his points. Uh, it's, it's, it's just an easy book to get through and it really breaks down a very complex problem in some simple terms. As you get into the book, there's several areas that I think you'll find very interesting 
in terms of understanding the rule of the clan. The first thing that Mark does is he really takes the time to break down the two societies that we typically see in the world. There's the society of contract where we live in the United States and other Western countries where the individual is held in higher regard than the group, uh, where the rule of law really outweighs uh, all of the aspects of feud and revenge. Uh, I mean, there are stark differences between these two societies, yet when we go into the places where transnational terror is most prevalent, it's clan tribal societies. And they are the antithesis of what we really know and understand in our own society of contract. So just by defining the differences in these two areas, I think Mark really does a great job of giving you some framework to compare and contrast where you're coming from and where you're going. The second thing that I think uh, Mark does in his book is the second category that he focuses on. He really breaks down clan organization in a way that's structural and pretty easy to get your head around. Um, he talks about how legal and political power is decentralized through the clan, you know, egalitarian, if you will, and how dynamic that is. And he, com and, he, and he shows you different models of how that plays out. And he goes all over the world, from Pakistan to Scotland, and shows you how these different dynamics of clan society can manifest organizationally. And, it, and everything from hybrid organizations, where you actually have a formal state and clans, uh, like we see in many areas of the Middle East today, and then complete clan societies where you have nothing but rule of the clan. Uh, and so understanding that organizational structure uh, is really helpful. The next thing that Mark does is he goes in, into the following chapter and he, real, he really gets into the clan culture. Uh, he, he, he breaks down this notion of honor. You know, we talk a lot about that when we talk about tribes and clans, but do we really understand what honor is all about? Do we really understand what a strong concept honor is when you're in an honor-based society where the group, the needs of the group actually outweigh the needs of the individual? And honor is something that you're bound to fulfill, bound to restore, bound to pursue. Honor is everything in clan society and understanding how honor manifests in all these different aspects of feud and revenge and conflict resolution is an essential component of understanding clan framework and he really breaks this down. Uh, I found it personally to be one of the most impactful elements in the book was understanding clan culture and what those components really mean. Um, for example, in Pashtun Wali, you'll see these things right there, and it's just, it really jumps out at you when he breaks it down as kind of a generic framework. Um, then, once he's talked about the organizational structure and the culture, he actually gives you some practical recommendations on how to work within clan society. What I found interesting in this is that Mark really has had no exposure to village stability operations or any of the bottom-up things that we've been doing in clan society in the last couple of years, yet one of the primary recommendations he makes in this book is bottom up uh, in, in making efforts to work from the bottom to accept clan realities and tribal realities for what they are and then work within those existing realities to help connect them to the formal society. Uh, and, and, and he makes a compelling case for this in the book that, that these realities uh, are, are extremely important to, to accept and to work with. Now, the final thing that I want to talk about, at least in the book, that I think you'll find of interest, that I think Mark does really well, is that while clanism and honor-based societies certainly have certain components uh, within them that are extremely important and, and frankly, uh, viable aspects of governance that we should probably think about, Mark makes a case here that clanism, rule of the clan, is not what we want in civil society. Whether it's Afghanistan, uh, whether it is Yemen or Syria, there's a difference between accepting and working within the rule of the clan and embracing the rule of clan as the end-all be-all. And Mark's premise in this is that ultimately moving these traditional civil societies to society of contract is in our best interest over time and it's in the best interest of that state. And he cautions that if we ignore rule of the clan, if, if we just leave it to its own devices, that we actually will put ourselves at risk for a return to clanism in our own society, which is a pretty stark warning. 
And when you look at the way Al-Qaeda and other transnational groups are moving into these clan societies, setting up shop, and then projecting terror from these clan areas, I think, I think it bears this out uh, in, in no small detail. So yeah, he really walks you through from the bare basics of clan society all the way through some important considerations of how to work within clan society and, and, and how to think about how we interact and move clan society in a strategic direction uh, for the future. Um, I will tell you that I, I think what you'll walk away with when you, when you read Mark's book at the end of the day is a better appreciation of clan society, tribalism, and those dynamic aspects of traditional civil society where we often work, whether you're private sector, public sector, uh, we're going to see this stuff a time and time again. Afghanistan is not uh, an anomaly. Um, there are going to be a range of places where we go that we have to understand clan society. And, and so the, the tradecraft that we have to have to operate in that human domain really requires us to understand at a fundamental level what clan society is all about. And Mark puts us on the right foot to do this. I've read it. I, I've read it multiple times. I carry it with me. Uh, and for those of you that know me, you know that when I recommend a book to you, I tell you I'm, I'm, I'm solid behind it. And I think this one is one uh, that you'll find extremely useful to you as you go forward. So I hope you'll, uh, I hope you'll get Rule of the Clan. Uh, keep it as a tool in your toolkit. Uh, and if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you're just watching us for the first time on the Stability Institute on STAB TV, I hope that you'll also check out uh, our digital archive library where we have just a ton of content on clan and tribal dynamics and all kinds of other topics related to stability tradecraft. Uh, when this video is over, just go to a uh, new member section, uh, click on that tab, fill out the information and you'll become a member. It's free and you'll have access to all of this type of content. So. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I appreciate the fact that you're out there fostering stability in these rough places. And uh, if you're not a member of the Institute, I hope that you'll join us. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Stability TV.